All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Try that again. Good evening, everybody. Twitter and Periscope users, thank you very much for tuning in for this evening's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Glad to have you along for this evening. Again, decently quiet into the Mid-South area for the present time frame, but we have a lot of stuff to talk about for this evening. So if you'd like to know more, all you have to do is just drop your comments into the uh, drop whatever you got in the way of location and weather and or questions about the forecast. Go ahead and drop them in the comments section. We'd love to have you along for the ride for this evening and glad to everybody for stopping by for ride now. Continued seeing the possibility of some sprinkles and also maybe some snow showers tomorrow for Christmas Eve. How apropos and how timey can you get on that? But also again the possibility for seeing again some heavier possibilities of weather a little bit later on this week. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Monka Boo G, thank you very much uh, for joining us on Periscope for tonight and Twitter as well. And we'll keep the conversation moving here with our Facebook users. And thanks to everybody for tuning in for tonight. Again, if you've got a location report, where you're from, we'd love to know more about you, where you're at, and what the weather's doing where you're at. So drop us a temperature report, sky conditions, winds, whatever you've got across the area. We'd love to know, again, a little bit more about what it looks like in your particular area. If you're in the Mid-South or out of the Mid-South, again, please give us an update. We'd love to have that. Coming up, we'll take a look at earthquakes, a couple of them today in the Mid-South area. Not huge, but stuff that you can help out with when it comes to things like citizen science. And we've also got more information, again, about travel conditions across the Mid-South, which there is a lot of that going on into the course of the rest of the weekend. So let's go ahead and get things going as we head into the rest of the forecast for the next couple of days. Be prepared for some changes and also be prepared to stay tuned for more coming up as we get into the course of the rest of the next few days. Here's what it looks like in a nutshell. For those of you on Periscope and Twitter, you can see the Facebook. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can't see it. But again, for Periscope and Twitter, bottom portion of the page, you can see the forecast scrolling by in the blue bar right there and pertinent information on the left hand side of your screen there so more details including my email address austin.onic at wrag.com mid 40s tomorrow if we get enough sunshine and drizzle that's about as much as I could fit into the comment bar section right here so we could see again the potential for some uh, more problems out across the area we'll talk about that coming up as to how interesting it's going to get in just a little bit so stay tuned for more there much colder for the big day itself as a reinforcing shot of cold air heads on through. We're going to try to recoup some of the temperatures on the day after Christmas, but then right afterwards, another shot of cold air, and this one sticks around for a while. We are not going to see 50 degrees anytime soon. It's going to be very chilly into the course of the next several days. So be prepared again for that scarf and the coat, especially as you head out to the Christmas Eve services into later on tonight. Let's see, Corbin Barber, welcome from Bay St. Louis. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Phyllis Moss from in and around Water Valley, Mississippi. Thank you very much. And also into the Mid-South as we go into the rest of the evening. Hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, wow. Pardon me for that. First time I've ever actually sneezed on a weather cast. That's history making right there. We did have a couple of allergies and dust. I don't know why the air conditioning is on in here tonight, but it's awfully chilly, and that's why I got the jacket on for right now. We do have, again, the potential for uh, more possibilities. Hang on a second. For those of you who are on Facebook, probably can hear me a little bit better. Always helps to have your mic in the right location uh, to see what goes on there or to listen to what goes on there. Currently, again, we have two earthquakes to talk about. One happened at about 7.30 this morning, just around the area of the Mississippi River. The one in yellow happened at about 3.30 this afternoon. The more stronger earthquake happened here at 2.5. This one was about a 1.6. So if you felt either of these in and around the Mid-South, definitely want to let the the United States Geological Survey and the Center for Earthquake Research and Information know about them. Your data could help the earthquakes out there, the earthquake researchers, the students, the grad students learn more about what you felt, where, and when. So if you felt either of these in southeast Missouri, head to the University of Memphis Center for Earthquake Research and Information or earthquakes.usgs.gov.usgs.gov and you'll be able to uh, participate by filling out the Did You Feel It report. So again, that's going to be a great opportunity for you to practice what's called citizen science. We Skitty, thank you very much for Wes Kitty. 
I guess. Sorry about that from uh, Periscope. Thanks for joining us for tonight. And again, we'll keep up to date. Yes, technically this is not weather information per se, but it's again very close to the New Madrid fault line in and around portions of the Mid-South area. So we kind of like to be able to make certain we know a little bit more about what's going on in and around this area where it comes to earthquakes. So we'll keep you updated on that as we go throughout the rest of the next several weeks. Bright and cherry around Oxford this evening. The view from the Student Union still under construction, but a lot of free parking spaces on campus for later on tonight. And also not seeing too much in the way of fog, but some cloudy skies above Vaught-Hemingway Stadium at Ole Miss for this evening. Taking a look around downtown, Big River Crossing lit up quite nicely and lighting up the underside of the cloud cover tonight, but no rainfall coming down around downtown Memphis and in and around the Mississippi River Valley. Probably some pretty dense fog expected into tomorrow morning. Now, travel conditions in the area for tonight, we're not getting, again, a lot of major backups or slowdowns. Traffic is a lot less than what it was a few hours ago at 55 and Goodman Road around South Haven looking off toward Horn Lake off in the distance there. So so far not seeing again a lot of major problems but later tomorrow morning could be something to take a look at and tomorrow is expected to be a very busy day when it comes to airline travel. Live look at 240 and Airways back to around Plow and Democrat Boulevards into around Memphis International main terminal right there and a few flights going on for takeoff. More of this information available at WRHE.com slash weather. And again, so far, we're not getting any delays to report at Memphis International. That big green icon you see there shows, again, delays of about 15 minutes or less. Cloudy skies, no delays to report here. But we are starting to see some more delays showing up, mainly at JFK in New York and Newark in New Jersey, where we had a CBS correspondent tell us earlier tonight that there's a lot more uh, traffic moving on through. There are a lot more humans heading off to various locations. But so far, major and connecting airports are not seeing that much of a major problem. But once again, if you want to check this out for yourself, WREG.com or fly.faa.gov from the FAA's Air Traffic Control System Command Center. Great way to get information on this when you're heading out for travel. And we'll keep an eye on this into the course of the rest of few days. Now, into the rest of the Mid-South, Storm Tracker 3S radar, nothing showing up. We have nothing in the way of precipitation just yet. Tomorrow, that could be a different story. We'll talk about where and when coming up here in just a little bit. Let's see, Stacy. Dowdy from Selmer, Tennessee. Sorry, bifocals don't work too well uh, at this point in time. 37 degrees, cloudy in Berclair Wells Station. Grady Bennett, thank you very much. Uh, Merry Christmas to Marcia Spiller Miller. Thank you very much uh, for dropping on through the area. Kevin Dunn, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for dropping on by. Kara Smith, Merry Christmas to you from House Onik. Back on up into an Atoka. Uh, Torrance... Niner Forever, Lester, snow in and around St. Louis in the morning. Family driving from there tomorrow. What time is it forecast to start? Well, for right now, and good question and good timing, now that we're talking about this, we don't have a lot going on at this point in time. Let me get the satellite picture off of here and that'll be a little bit easier to spot. That's not satellite picture, so ignore that sat part of sat rad. This is the snowfall that you can see developing over parts of Kansas and right around I-70, right around St. Joseph, back toward Omaha into Lincoln. That's where we're seeing, again, some of that snowfall developing. So for those of your relatives in tune around that area, uh, where did you go here? Right there. I had your name, Torrance, Niner Forever, Lester, if I'm reading that correctly. Uh, that's, again, where the snow is coming from. So it'll be starting in the next couple of hours, but it's not going to get anything in the way of Major League problematic until tomorrow morning. Now, the National Weather Services across parts of the Midwest, from Pennsylvania all the way back to Wyoming, have issued winter weather advisories. Now, most of that at this time is just north of St. Louis, so we're not getting anything in the way of reports for St. Louis, but there is that possibility you may see some of that snowfall going into that location. Again, from Wyoming and the Rockies all the way back into around Chicago, We've got again some more problems going on here, and back toward Cleveland, even into around West Virginia, Maryland, and parts of the area close to uh, Virginia itself. We've got several warnings in effect. Looks like other warnings now have been issued for New York State, right off the Great Lakes, and all the way up into New England. So this is going to be the main area for right now. But noticing again for the time being that we do not have anything in effect for here, we're just not getting enough in the way of major amounts of precipitation with this. 
still the potential of it. We'll talk about that in just a little while. Temperatures cooling off by just a bit, mid to upper 30s to lower 40s on live real-time WeatherNet 3. Let's go ahead and run the numbers and show you what we've got going on into tomorrow. Temperatures by Dawn Patrol, lower to mid 30s, heading out for those early church services tomorrow morning. Temperatures brisk and cold. Lunchtime temperatures, again, back in the mid to upper 30s. The cloud cover tomorrow is going to depend, is going to give us the idea of how much temperature rise we're going to get. If we get more cloud cover with some sunshine in there, we may actually see a little bit warmer temperatures than this by midday. If we get a lot of thick cloud cover out there, probably going to be seeing a lot of colder conditions. Now, by early in the afternoon, brief burst of precipitation comes in from back to the north and west. Green is rainfall, white is snow, pink is rain mixed with or changing over to snow or some form of frozen precipitation out there. That's going to be the main thing we're looking at. But again, into tomorrow evening, right past about sunset, we could see some snowflakes out there, maybe some sleet, depending on how warm the temperature is down toward the surface. Mainly, I think it's going to be rain, rain mixed with or changing over to a few snowflakes as you start to head out to the kids' Christmas services at church or, again, for the late services. It looks like by the time we get into around the end of the church service period, especially the candlelight late services, most of that moisture should be gone heading away from us. So this is going to be a brief burst of showers mainly, but also could be some other precipitation in there. And then cold and dry as we head into the big morning itself. Clouds will be sticking around for early Christmas morning as the kids open their presents and looking dry and chilly out there, but at least no major increase inclement weather going on. So good news for travelers out there. But tomorrow morning for Christmas Eve morning, some parts of the Mid-South could see again fog into the area. And that means we could see the potential of some slow driving out there tomorrow. Doesn't look like that's going to stick around for Christmas morning, but stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on that into the next couple of days. Now, later on this week, not for this particular cell coming on through here, as we get into around late Monday, early Tuesday, that one stays mainly back to the north of us. But watch what happens as we go toward the end of the week. We start to see more of that potential drop very close to the Mid-South area as we wrap up the last week of 2017. Now, what does this mean? This means mainly that a lot of what we're seeing in the way of very heavier chances of uh, the precipitation is going to be staying well to our north. What we're going to get out of this is still way too early to tell. There are signs. We can give you an idea as to what may be happening, but beyond that, it is way too early to tell what may be working its way into and around the Mid-South area. So stay tuned for updates on this, and we'll keep you advised as to what's going on in the next few days. Tomorrow may actually be wind up being one of the warmest days of the last few days of 2017, back in the mid-40s, and again, mostly cloudy conditions out there, but there could be that potential of drizzle late in the morning, early to mid-afternoon. Again, could be some of that changing over, mixing with some snow potential or frozen precipitation mixed in with that. It's again going to be a kind of a judgment call as to how much the moisture is, how strong that moisture is, and how cold it is down toward the surface. If the temperatures are pretty warm, we're not going to see much of anything but rainfall. But if the temperatures are in the 30s, especially the mid 30s, because there's too much cloud cover out there, we may see a little bit more snowfall and the potential for maybe the potential of some more problems. Tiger fan Jenny, welcome to the show on Periscope. Thanks for joining us and thanks for stopping on by for tonight. Rest of the forecast again for the big day on Monday. Big burst of cold air comes on through. We catch a little bit of that back into the lower 40s, so a little colder, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy on Monday. For the day after Christmas, Kind of a cloud-sun mixture, but temperatures going back a little warmer into the mid-40s. But after that, another burst of cold air comes on through. That's what happens at this time of the year. You can get these repeat performances of all these areas of uh, cold air dropping on through. This one looks like it's going to stay around for a while, so we'll get the cold air in first on Wednesday. And then we see again the potential for some of that moisture mixing with or changing over to some form of frozen precipitation. It's a little too early to tell right now, but again, the signs are there that we may pick up something could be a little bit more strong in more recent models coming up as we get into the course of the next few days. So stay tuned for more on that. Now, let's go ahead and finish up the year and show you more about what we've got going on into around New Year's Eve. Another burst of cold air comes on through. So very chilly as we head toward New Year's Eve, the day itself. High temperatures may only barely be above freezing. But once again, this is several days out, so this will probably change another potential 
of maybe some more precipitation coming up as we go towards sunset into the early evening hours of the last day of the year. Very cold for New Year's Day. Temperatures by the time you head on back home once again, that's where we may see again the very cold air into the area. The coldest air of the season may be showing up here in the next week or so toward the end of the year, beginning of next. We could see some very cold temperatures out there. So if you're planning on heading out to see the guitar drop on Beale Street, it's going to be in the 30s by about sunset. It's probably going to be in the 20s, maybe even the lower 20s by the time the guitar drops. Very chilly conditions expected out there. So please keep that in mind. If you have any plans for outdoors, I'm guessing that it's probably going to be indoors for a lot of New Year's Eve parties coming up into the near future. But if you have to park and walk to get someplace, again, plan ahead. We could be seeing some definite changes coming up into the near future. More of my forecast. If you can't tune in on TV or listen on the computer, dial us up on the radio, Country 92.5 or Oldies 102.3 on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network schedule, and we'd be glad to have you along. Kristen Holloway will have an update on the, all the day's news on News Channel. 3 at 10. I'll have your forecast, and Glenn Carver will have more on all the day, a busy day in sports coming up as well. So definitely want to stay tuned for there coming up. Again, we'll keep you updated on that throughout the course of the rest of the forecast. If you have some suggestions, something you want to see on here for our updates, we'd love to know more about them. Usually average about 10, 15 minutes on these things, but if there's something you want to see, uh, worldwide weather data, climate data, weather where the troops are, stuff like that. We'd love to have you along for the ride, but let us know what you'd like to see on here. Again, if you're on Periscope or Twitter, email address is right there uh, around the my shoulder area, right about there, austin.onic at wreg.com. And if you're on Facebook, I just told it to you, so if you want to tell me something, go right ahead. Or you can reach me on social media. We'd love to have you along for the ride there. We'll keep you updated on the forecast over the course of the next few days, so definitely want to stay tuned for more on that. And of course, we'll have more coming up on new Channel 3 at 10 and throughout the rest of the holiday weekend. So definitely want to stay tuned for more there. Thanks to everybody for stopping on by. Really appreciate the comments and the locations and the weather reports. So thank you very much for all of that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned for more on News Channel 3 at 10 and throughout the rest of the weekend on social media.